How's it going, doctor? Oh, uh, it's doing pretty good. I'm having a problem with one of my patients. I'm pulling worms out of him. You know, little bitty worms. Some bee laid eggs in him. With your modified grafting tool. Used a modified syringe. Syringe, but it's an odd one. It had just a blunt end on it, and I bent it over. Makes a pretty good crafting tool. I don't know where it came from. I haven't been able to find it, but I've got two of them, and you can't have them. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks uh, for sharing. <laughs> it's in here in uh, this is my little magic box. There it is. If I can find it. I can get it, I mean. That one right there, it has a blunt end with a kind of cutout on the end of the needle. Can you see it there? Like a, looks like a needle for airing up a ball on it. That's what it looks like, but it's made for a hypo, and it's extra long. So I flatten the end out on it and just bend it over and it makes a pretty, pretty decent grafting tool. Working better than these JZBZs. At least it is for me. Yeah. And, uh, and the other way I've made a grafting tool just to bend a piece of wire, flatten the end out on it, and bend it over. Like that. And this one works better than any of them, actually. <laughs> but I've got it just a tad too big on the end there. But it pulls them out pretty decent. Got to wet it a little bit. You stick it in your mouth and lick the larva off of it if there's any on it. And <laughs> slide it down there. Get your protein while you work. You missed. I missed him. Sure did. Well, we just dive back for another one. It's hard to see them little things sometimes. Tell me when I went to get yeah. Chinese. I missed that one too. Give me a break. We'll refill the feeder real quick. This is about a two gallon bucket, I guess. Shut the valve, let it run out the hose. That's it. These, these little tabs on this lid really stink. So I gotta be careful when I turn it over. There's uh, holes drilled all around the sides of it. I gotta hold the lid on as I turn it over, it'll just dump out. And spill all over your shoes and your pants. Uh, we're gonna get Take a break here for five, ten minutes and then get right back. There's coffee and there's some refreshments back there. There's food, there's flowers. I found this year my, my, uh, my yard that I had fenced off. I live on the cattle farm. And um, I had about a three acre yard. And my mustard, wild mustards popped up. And they stay flowering all winter long. And they even through January. Yeah. And every day it got above 70 degrees. Our bees would just race out and forage them every single day. Yeah, I've heard that in situations like this. Yeah. You get that sometimes too in the mustard. And when I opened my eyes up in February, I had almost as much honey as possible. And I actually had brood starting even with colder weather. The tour's leaving me. Come on. We're on a tour at a USDA facility. For a bee meeting today or a bee seminar. I don't want to play bees. <laughs> they split us up into three groups. It was a pretty good turnout today. This is the non beekeeping crowd over here right now. Everybody over there is suiting up to do something with the bees. <laughs> I'm gonna pause on these shelves here for a minute. This, of course, was still in the honey extracting and drying room. 
And it's the first thing you see when you come in the room. These were to the right. And it was two sets of shelves with all these big funnels with lid rings on the bottom of them with lights above them. And uh, you know, room on the shelf to put at least a quart jar. And so we were all speculating on what this must have been. Some kind of new, new way to warm the honey, to bottle it or whatever. You know, we, we had no clue. Turns out this was not related to beekeeping at all. This was something for testing for parasites on different plants and the funnels had screens on them. They would put the plants into the funnels and and you know of course have a jar screw to the bottom of them and then do whatever treatment they were doing and count the pests or parasites or whatever that fell through into the jar. So that's what that was. I just thought it was interesting. But what they do is they control your temperature and your humidity so when we're doing any experiments on bees that we're taking samples from the hives and we're putting so many bees per cup and you have to keep them regulated otherwise we won't have any bees to do any studies on. So we've got three of these big huge placebo incubators here in the corner. We've got wash and dry for all of our sheep. I don't know if you'll be able to hear what he was saying but these are some incubators for grafting. There's our drafting station converted to a grafting station. <laughs> Pro draft. And the observation hive. Let's hope and see what they. <laughs> okay, I'm all over. He loves to get stuff. He's fixing to have a lot of fun. Man. Yeah. yeah. See her? Or is that just one? No, there she is. Yeah, you're right. That is her. Alright. There's a USDA facility on the back of the Pearl River Community College, which is that red roof over by the water tower. I'm not even going to be able to show you but a small portion of this. A lot of labs and testing facilities and all kind of stuff. Greenhouses all over the place. It's a nice place. It was a good meeting. So today they had a six and a half hour field day on honeybees and, and beekeeping. Real good stuff, real good stuff. There was five doctors there. This was all done at the Thad Cochran Southern Horticulture Lab, USDA facility. So we had a really good session. I wish I'd have gotten to video more, but when you're in a crowd like that, it's hard to, it's hard to get any sound that's worth having. And it's kind of hard not to be disruptive when you're the guy standing up holding the phone in everybody's face. <laughs> because nobody wants to be on camera. So they had five doctorates at this meeting, tag teaming to do the seminar. And they all did a really good job. And the only one that I know personally, uh, and it's only because I've met him a couple of times, is Jeff Harris. He's a state B guy. He works, I'm not sure what his official title is, but he works for Mississippi State University and he's just, he knows his stuff. He's a humble guy, but I'm gonna tell you, uh, shout out to Jeff. Props to Jeff. <laughs> Did a fine job, uh, great seminar. If, you, if, if any of you ever get a chance to go to anything where he's teaching, uh, you'll enjoy it and you'll get a lot out of it. So it was interesting to see the facilities there at the, at the USDA lab. And when you go to these meetings or seminars like this, you're always, and, and a lot of bee clubs have it too, but you're always able to walk away with literature and uh, sample packs of apivar or whatever and so i didn't load up on all that stuff but so be sure and ask if you don't see it laying around ask and see if you can get some of it to test on your hives and the only thing i walked away with from this one was another one of these books here and it's simply because i think it's a pretty pretty good pamphlet and i lost the last one i got